and this application is brought by a person that's incarcerated and brought false allegations and self-profiled allegations by the state and the media. And this uh, profiling has enforced an injustice process that I am currently incarcerated in. I request the court to take note of my access and disability that is being forced by the, by the respondents in this application. I request that the court give me an opportunity as a human to hear me out as I request access to state my side and basically defend my main application as the reason for putting this application before the court as an urgent application, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, your, my urgency for this application, um, under Rule 612 of the Uniform Rule of the Court, um, Your Honor, I state that, Your Honor, it's highly impossible for me to meet the practice DVA, uh, to request the court to accept the practice deviations because of the fact that I'm not able to meet the normal required um, court rules because of the fact that I have a main application that's already on a normal rule, which is under Rule 6. And because this um, application that I present before this court is to enforce constitutional rights that I'm not able to actually have a defense on the main application, I request the court to consider um, under Rule 12, um, under Rule 612, that I be granted urgency on the basis of that I have led lack of resources to be able to take a normal course. And also, Your Honor, the application is brought by a person um, that's absolutely under not normal circumstances, Your Honor. And I'll give grounds to the unnormal circumstances that I bring this application before. The main application is of a person that was deported out of a country in Tanzania um, with false documents issued by the Home Affairs that confirmed that this deportation was not lawful. And in that also, Your Honor, is that my incarceration is also in question. It is also found that, Your Honor, that in this de main deport uh, application, that I cannot further give any um, context to it because it's a matter on another uh, platform, but the, on another court. But the issue is, is, is fundamental that I am challenging the lawfulness of my imprisonment. And I'm also challenging the lawfulness of my deportation and my arrest in Tanzania. And in that, Your Honor, I am not able to self-represent myself without a lack, which having a lack of legal resources. And because of the lack of legal resources, I am not able to defend my main application. Um, I'll, take the, uh, I'll take the court into... What legal resources do you need? Your Honor, I require access to a, to a laptop to I'm type... Not But Your Honor, Your Honor, you haven't even heard my application. We are making a decision up but front. You are not giving access to For what reason, in which constitutional reason do you give to, to deny me access without hearing my application, Your Honor? Listen, that is prejudice listen, of you listen, not to allow me to. Let me talk. You will get law books, They are the same books that every jurist in the country, pre a certain time when laptops became the law, Used. I used them when I started practice 30 something years ago. They will give you access to all the information you need for purposes of preparation of both your main application and your defense in, in the free state. And that is essentially what you are. So you will get access to Can I, can I finish my application? Can I bring my application before the court? You can, you can make your submissions as the best with pleasure. Um, Your Honor, I, I, I would like to take the, the court into the processes that I've gone through to bring this application before the court and also reason why I've requested for a laptop or access to internet or information as access to information is a constitutional right of anyone. And also... You don't have a constitutional right to a laptop and a laptop. Can I, can I finish? No, no, I'm putting it to you. Show me where the Constitution says you have a constitutional right to a laptop your Honor, I do not have a constitutional right to that, but I have a constitutional right to access to court. And the resources can be limited as a right of, to an inmate can be limited and under the limitation. Limit and under those rights, Your Honor, there are access to laptops and, 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 and modems in prison currently to students. So are you, saying, student. are, are you saying that I do not have a right to are access court? a student, Mr. No, Your Honor. I'm giving you law books. All the material you need 
I will give you access to it. I will just not be in front. Your Honor, I have evidence in the main application that has to be seen, that is visual <coughs> evidence, which is press briefings. It's also in the responding papers of the main application where the respondent states that I have not added those press uh, statements that are put because of the fact that I do not have access to them and I have not watched them. And how am I going to watch them when I'm in CMAX, when I'm incarcerated? And the fact that I have no resources to access those evidence. And the application is based on uh, the following. But Your Honor, you have, you have thrown my application out of court without me giving you background. No, I actually haven't, Mr. Bates. No, I'm telling you, I'll give you the material you need. I'm just not giving you electronic material. Uh, that's biased, Your Honor. Because you haven't let me finish why I, I, I stated the, the, the application. Mr. Bastwick, you want... And you are defending the, the, the application as the defendant. You are not giving me an opportunity to justice, Your Honor. You are, you are blocking me. I'm still... I'm, I'm putting my... Sub you can allow me at least to finish my submission. You are and then throw it out. You are welcome to make submission. Okay. As I said, I will give you access to material. Okay, you are can, welcome to... Can I continue to make my, my, my submission? Mr. don't be rude. I'm sorry, you can I continue? Be can I make my submission? Mr. Bester, be polite and different in a court of law. Please don't stand there and roll your eyes. It is really unbecoming. We are having a debate here. That is what we are doing. I have given you my prima facie. I'm going to give you a full opportunity to place your facts before me. But you will need to convince me that you require access to a laptop and a modem. For purposes other than what hard copy material cannot give you, that is in your papers, space. All right. Uh, Your Honor, I also bring the fact that I'm self-represented in both applications, which is this one. Um, Your Honor, I have launched the application on the 13th, which was commissioned on the 13th of August. Um, because of struggling to get third parties to assist me to file the application online, it was very difficult for me to bring this application. As you would see that the respondent used the fact that the delays of dates of the sit-down because of the fact that there were missing applications and missing documentation in my submission. And because of that fact, Your Honor, is that I do not have access to court because I cannot file an application without anyone assisting me. I'm also uh, in a position where I'm disprivileged because of the fact that I have two visits a month, which is 30 minutes a visit um, each month, and I'm also limited to legal resources because every um, legal counsel that has to see me must make a booking based on availability, then that would be granted. So meaning that if I have to submit or access any information, my resource of accessing information is limited because of the rules and regulations that are enforced on me at CMAX. And because of that, Your Honor, I cannot file an application as I wish. I cannot take any litigation of facts as I wish um, at any point to access the court. The court is digital. And if the court is digital and I have to use a third party to file an application in this court, it makes it impossible for me in my current circumstances. I'm not asking for a free will to access to internet. I will showcase the court that access can be limited and can be secured in an environment that I'm currently in. It is proven by other courts and other prisons that has been enforced the same laws. And access to Access to court, Your Honor, is very, is very fundamental to any person that is incarcerated. It is irrelevant uh, or important to, ins to, ins to, to insist that only students are privileged. It's, it's, it's discriminative and it's not equality to everyone because access to court brings fairness to all because, Your Honor, without access to court, I cannot fight for my own freedom and my liberty is at question at this point. And I am requesting the court to assist me to access court. That is all I am asking the court. If the court can make any arrangements that I would be able to access the court, I have no problem. I will state in the following, Your Honor, application. I had requested that head of prison assist me on typing documentations at the center. This application was disapproved. I was informed, and I have a copy of the application, that I was informed that I need to send the application, whatever I handwrite, to someone to type. I have limited resources in reaching those people and also getting to those people to give me those applications and type them and bring them back. By the time I file an application, I would already be out of the time frames that the court requires. And in that, Your Honor, I have placed these issues 
of access to information of hard copies had, that took me an average, I was only allowed from November on the 16th by the head of prison and the area commissioner to be allowed to even receive a novel. I am denied access to a diary at the current state that I am. I am denied access to information that involves any information that is printed that brings question of evidence of where it be printed by the media. It's been rejected by the, by the current respondents, Your Honor. I have not been able to access that information. And currently, Your Honor, I cannot in any way access that information. It is proven by the, by, by the respondents answering papers in the main application that my papers are incomplete because of lack of evidence. The lack of evidence is fundamental to my liberty. And all I am asking the court, I am not asking for access because it is access to laptop or modem based on the fact that it is the only resource that I need. It can be in any way. It is also proven in a case in 1977, which is Boss v. Smith in the Supreme Court um, of, 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 of America, that it, a fundamental right to any imprisoned person is to access the court. It is the responsibility of the, of correction, or of, of the prison authorities to provide Le uh, trained legal assistance or library that has legal resource. I am asking for these accesses that are not available at the current facility that I'm at. The best fundamental option for me to be able to manage my, my, my defense is to have access to something that I would be able to present before the court. And that's what I'm asking this court to take into consideration. I will also go into the following acts that I feel are infringed. If I am not able to bring an application before the court as fair as anyone else, it means that Section 9 of the Constitution is directly infringed by the respondents, which means we are not equal before law and that I am not protected and I do not benefit from the same law. And in this current stage, if I am out to get hard copies, Your Honor, it is proven by the correctional, correctional officials of the United States where this order was granted. In 2010, it was taken by Lennox and Nex that all hard copy material is fading out and some material is no longer available in hard copy. Another fact is that, Your Honor, court is only available online. The evidence that I require is available online. The access to internet is a completely different factor to what I request. I request access to resource. The resource can be the device that at this current stage can be easily monitored and managed and controlled without any security risk by the respondents, Your Honor, because of the fact that they have two members outside my door 24-7 of EST, highly trained. They supervise every single thing I do. I am showering in a cage. I exercise in a cage. I am completely by myself. There is no way I can access anything without them being next to me. There are cameras outside my door. I am asking for a very minimum in this current situation that I request access to a device, even if it's without, so that I can type and view this press briefings that were made that said that Tabo had to be deported or whatever reasons, so that I can type the key factors that I want to use as evidence to the unlawful deportation uh, application that I have put as the main application. And in because of that, Your Honor, we must also, the court must take into consideration that 90% of this case of the main application the state has trialed it in the media, meaning 90% of the information is not accessible to me. And most of the allegations I don't have access to. I don't even get a newspaper. I don't have a radio. I don't have a watch. I don't even know what time it is. That is how I've lived for the past 16 months. So my, this privilege and my circumstances of incarceration enforces me to try and fight for myself. And Your Honor, I believe that any person has a right to fight to have legal and fair process to access the court. And all I am asking is to be able to put my application in proper manner. If the court is able to arrange that I have access to, this, to, to, to the required documentation and the required evidence, I have absolutely no problem. But at the current stage, there's a direct infringement on section 32 of access of information. I have no information. I'm, not, I'm only allowed certain information that's approved by the area commissioner, and in, through that, I cannot access whatever information I would feel relevant to my application. I cannot access um, any administrational case that I want to, to pursue with the court because I would need a third party to assist me. And that third party would rely on financial resources and also rely on strict 
uh, limitations by the respondents, meaning that I have a very limited resource in getting visitation, be it legal or otherwise. And second uh, and fourth, Your Honor, it's uh, access to court. The access to court, to me, is an absolute because I don't have access to court if I don't have assistance. If you give me books, I can read the books, but who's going to do my application? Who's going to file my application? I would depend on a third party. And dependent on a third party, which is evident in this application, has become the cause of my application being delayed from the 13th of August. It was an urgent application that had to sit on the 16th of August. And we are now in September. It's nearly a month. And the respondent lashed on their papers that it's my doing and my self-creation of urgency. And it cannot be my self-creation of urgency because, Your Honor, I had filed the main application. I had drafted and given briefs to four councils that have rejected the briefs based on the fact that they felt that they cannot represent me because of the uh, media carnage that is currently existent in my case. And they will not put their reputation according to that. And in that, it forced me to file this application on my own. I have even taken further steps to try, after filing the application, to appoint counsel. But the counsel I seek is a counsel that's an expert in international law and in immigration law. And I have not been able to obtain that, John. And all I am asking the court is to take in consideration that I have followed all required processes within correctional services, and even correctional services themselves know very well that I have tried my level best to try and request law books. I am limited. I am limited to what I receive. I am limited to what I can receive. It is the discretion of the, of the respondents that decides what I can receive or what I cannot. If it does not meet what they, what, what, whatever um, security understanding they have. I don't know what media information has security issues, Your Honor, but it is a direct injustice to me, Your Honor. And I feel that under Section 38 of the Constitution that I have highlighted how many constitutional rights of mine have been infringed. And if the court feels that um, to access court can be done in any other way, I am more than willing to accept that. But at my current position, I cannot see how I can type a document without accessing a device. I cannot see how I can file an application without being given access or without somebody assisting me to access to file online. And that, those are things that are currently existent in the responding papers of the respondents. They lash at my application based on the fact that I do not have resources. I cannot, unfortunately, enforce these um, requirements on the respondents. I have to bring it before this court. And the court has to make a decision. If the court feels that I cannot access it, I'll accept. But I will say that it would be an injustice to my main application where I seek relief for unlawful deportation and unlawful imprisonment. It would mean that I'm deprived for defending my own liberty. And that is, to me, an absolute, as, as noted by the Supreme Court, Your Honor, that a person does, if a person challenges the, the, the detainee, um, and and, and the, 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 just, the authorities cannot justify why the person is there. The person must, give, must be given access to court. And I am asking for access. That's all I am asking. I am not asking for luxury. I'm not a asking for anything beyond that. Access to internet, Your Honor, I will bring it to the court that access to internet currently is available in about 240 prisons in America. That is limited. And access to court has been brought by the fact that correctional services in the United States have taken a decision that print material is too expensive or legal assistance for inmates in prison is too costly for, for, for prisons. And in that, they have allowed inmates where companies like um, Alova has designed a specialized device that I can submit to the court these documents that they've de developed a, a, a specialized tablet. This tablet has secure 100% access only to court educational uh, education and rehabilitation programs. And there is no way an inmate can use it for any, any other way. And this shows that correctional services itself can be innovative in providing me with access to court without having security risk. A device in a person, as it says by the United Nations, as it's an international human rights to access to internet, limited access to an inmate 
can be provided securely, especially currently with AI being available, where the, the, where the authorities can, mon can manage and, mon and control any uh, information that is controlled, even every key that an inmate touches on a device because of the AI, and it will report immediately for human um, uh, supervised if the in of inmate misuses the, the, the device in any way. The inmate is limited to which sites can be accessed. Access can be only to a, to a court and to, a, to, 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 to file and access to certain sites as, for example, uh, Linux and Next, which is to subscribe for information by law. And that is something that has been proven. And none of these, it's been available from 2010, Your Honor. And none have any security breaches up to date, until today. It's even improved by Australia, where they have enforced the same access, where they have allowed inmates to have access to, to tablets. And these tablets are limited to which access to internet an inmate can have. And all I am asking is access with limitations. I am asking for access as, as a resource to bring my application before the court. I am not asking that the court understands that access to this is fundamental to a person who is in my position. If I am not able to defend myself, it means that I am deprived of defense. And it's our constitution and it's guaranteed in the constitution that I have a right to protection and benefit as anyone through, through the court and the law. And I'm asking the law to look at this matter and look at the limitations. The respondent currently, as I have stated, provide students with access. This access already brings the risk that, is, that they bring up in this application. The risk already exists. They are able to put security measures to manage that risk. There is nothing untowards that I would bring that is new, that security measures cannot be put in place. I am the most guarded inmate in this country, Your Honor. It's been highly impossible that correctional services would not be able to supervise a device and limited access. And all I am asking is access. That is all I am asking. Your Honor, I will take the court also to, to understanding that the security measure that is brought up by um, the, the, the respondents in question to my application and access to legal resources is as follows, Your Honor, that in Finland, Denmark, and Belgium, Your Honor, um, there's systems that have been placed to have access, but the access is limited. This system is called the server, where the correctional services have something called um, prison cloud. Prison cloud allows you access to court, allows you access to resource, but it does not allow you access to anything else that the respondents or the prison of, or authorities will not approve. And based on that, it makes it accessible for a person to put an application before the court. And all I am asking the court to give me is an opportunity to use the same measures because the, the respondents are a large department where they have more than enough resources and IT experts to be able to provide me with the same access. And all I am asking is the same access. There's no one who's more privileged in prison and who is less privileged we are all equal, and that is through the Equality Act, Your Honor. And I believe that if I am denied based on the fact that I am not a student, I wouldn't want to be a student just for the sake that I want to put an application in court. I want to put an application in court as a legal resource, and if I no longer have an application in court, that the device can be removed from me. If I infringe on any of those, it can also be removed from me. But at this current stage, Your Honor, I see no reason why I cannot put my own application and argue my own application as best as I can. And I feel that at this current stage, I am treated unfairly because I approach an application and already I am faced with a, with a circumstance where I am not feeling that I am given an opportunity to hear, where I can argue and put facts before. And if the court, because I was not saying that this is the only uh, resource that would make it accessible to court, but it should be able that when a person does not have financial uh, muscle or financial resources, they should be able to access the court and argue whatever they wish for litigation. It's a constitutional right. And if that access is moved digitally, 
then the prison has to move digitally. It's proven by what I've brought before the court that other uh, prisons around the world have taken the same process because everything is turning digital and print is fading <coughs> out. There is no longer as many newspapers as there used to be and there will probably won't be for very long. So I am asking the court to take consideration that access to digital um, resources in prison is not a violation of human rights. It's not a slap in justice's face. It's not a disrespect to this court or anyone. It's just a humble plea that I request access to court. And if that is denied, then it means I do not have access to justice. It means I don't have access to court because if the honest, if the court says that I should only access books, you're still limiting me because it was proven in Denmark that access and meaningful access are two different things. I do not have meaningful access because I depend on someone else. It is also stated in the urgency application where the, respond, where, where the respondents question why we took so long to file. My assisting attorney to do correspondent, her laptop and cell phone was stolen at the prison. She was not able to file. There's a case number in everything. The, the, the correctional services are fully aware of this fact. But what I'm trying to say is that I am now dependent on another person to file an application. Even getting to this court, I had to physically try and, and request numerous assistance to get just the requisition to the respondent. And I am saying that this should not be the case. I should not be struggling to access this court. I should not have to come to this court to ask for a basic right because it is a guarantee through the Constitution that we are all equal. I do not feel equal at this stage with respect, Your Honor, that I was bringing an application and I felt that you were attacking me without giving me an opportunity. But I apologize if I offended you. But the bottom line is that I really just want access. I don't, it does not matter what form or what measures the respondents can bring. As long as it's access, they know very well, outside the allegations that have been brought, that I face currently and the unfound allegations of charges. I have for a numerous time have not infringed on any of the acts or regulations of correctional services. I have not been in any way difficult to the correctional services. I've complied with every rule that they have put before me. And there is no evidence that they can bring except allegations that I have not complied. And all I'm asking you, Your Honor, is that Thank you, my lady. Um, my lady, just so that I'm clear with my approach, I don't intend to be to be long. I don't know if uh, my lady still has agency as an issue in this well, matter. Well, I understand that that is an issue. Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Bezos, you have addressed Yes. 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 can address that. Thank you. Thank you. May I, I just seek leave to just place one thing on, on record, but the matter is now in full swing. Uh, the hearing my client had intended to file a supplementary affidavit consequent to the filing of the replying affidavit, but to also address um, further matters consequent to the information that they received uh, this past Friday, the the 13th and consultations were held on on Sunday and those papers were prepared yesterday. Yes, my, my lady, I, that, that is what I should have done as I was sitting down, but I did not want to, to interrupt the, the applicant in, in his address because I omitted to say that. Um, but I'm in the hands of the court because the application 
for leave to file those documents was intended to be heard this morning. We, unfortunately, it was not filed time, yes, we only filed this morning. So I don't know what... Uh, your, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. I'm informed he was only also served this morning. They were uploaded on court online, but yes. Yes, yes. But that, that is why, my lady, I'm saying I'm, I'm in the hands of the court if um, the court is of the view that the matter should proceed. Um, I'm informed it was uploaded on court online this morning. Yes. Perhaps I should address the issue of agency. Um, I don't know if the court wants to determine all the issues together. Yes. My lady, in my client's view, it is it is material uh, to the issues to be determined by this court, particularly in relation to the concerns raised by the respondents on the merits of this matter and the security considerations uh, if uh, the applicant is to have access to a laptop and, and a modem. My lady, I... I'm not going to I'm not accepting it as a said. Yes. Yes, yes. My attorney has it, but it has not been compiled properly, not stapled.
not right for you you're going to want to respond. Yes. Um, so Anna, I before I respond, I actually reach, I, I, on my side I argue that it's unfair, Your Honor, that yes. to even accept the papers, Your Honor. That's why I'm asking you if you want to respond to it. I haven't accepted them. Okay, I'd like. So that's what I said to counsel. I'm not accepting them. I want to see what they say. Okay. Because I don't want to be like you guys that are saying that it's not fair. Yeah. Okay. So I'm bringing an application to ask for to allow them to form the file. I assume you will want to respond to that. Yes. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I can How respond. Long do you to respond to their to this application for the further evidence. Um, as in, if the court accepts it. Yes. Um, well, in oh. general, because the court must decide whether to accept it, and I assume that you would want to file a response to say why it shouldn't be accepted. Yeah, I would. I think I, I'm, I'm prepared, Your Honor. It's fine. So it's nothing I can You will just follow. Just remember, Mr. Bester, I can't hear your evidence if it's not on affidavit. This I, isn't a trial. I understand. So you will have to stick to your founding affidavit and the replying affidavit you've already filed. Yeah, Your Honor, but if I have to do that, Your Honor, it means that I would have to write in hand and submit in hand. Then that's what you must do. I'm giving you that opportunity. Okay, how long will I get to do that? As much time as you need. I can simply remove the letter from the roll and you can set it down when you read. Okay. No, if you can give me a, an hour. An hour? Or do you want to give me a longer time? I don't know. As much time. Um, two hours is fine. I think rather what we would do is stand that down for the first and foremost. That will give you a day to file a response, and you you can file by tomorrow morning at 10, and you can file by a reply if you need to by tomorrow at 5. Sorry, Yana, can I just ask a question? Do I have, would I have to file online? That would and be I'm impossible by Thursday. Your Honor, I, 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 I would have the assumption that it's fine. We can proceed now. I'll respond now. It's fine. But, Mr. Bester, that's fine. Just understand, you must stick to what you've already said in your founding and replying affidavit. I'm not allowing submissions outside of that. You've okay. made a lot of submissions now outside of that. And I've allowed it, but it's not admissible in front of you. It has to be under oath. You've made a lot of allegations about countries like Belgium and Sweden and the USA and Australia allowing devices for prison. That is not admissible evidence. If it's not an affidavit, I cannot accept it in a way to speak. Those are the rules of this court. That's why I ask you. You want an hour or two? I'll give you an hour or two. But if you want longer, then what happens is this is the procedure. I remove the matter. And when you read, even if it's in a week or two weeks, you can set the matter down for hearing again. It doesn't mean it's urgent. That judge will decide whether it's urgent. But I will give you the opportunity to respond. That is your right. Okay. Is the, is the court saying you are accepting that application? No. I'm saying I'm giving you the opportunity to file an affidavit to say why it shouldn't be accepted. Oh. And to respond to it in the event that that court does accept. I understand that. You understand? If you don't want that opportunity, that's fine. Then I will make a decision myself on whether to accept this new evidence. But then, as I said, Mr. Bester, and this is why I'm repeating this for the third time, you are bound to your founding affidavit and your replying affidavit. That is the evidence you give this court. Under her, I don't accept evidence outside. <coughs> That's my last It's fine, Yana, you can proceed. We can proceed. We've got to proceed. Right. Then I can stand this matter now because I want to fully read this application for permission of supplementary evidence. Um, I have other matters to attend to at 10 o'clock. I can only speak to the court I need a, a, a yes, so, I, sorry, Anna, if if that's the case, if the matter is put down, would I would I still have the option of filing an affidavit or not? Well, you must decide, Mr. Bester, are you filing or are you not filing? That's why, Mr. Bester, you and I keep going around in circles. If you want to file, I will give you the opportunity 
Yes, Your Honor. But the, uh, the, the main reason why I'm asking is to understand if the matter would be set separate from today. The reason why I want to proceed because I'm already on condemnation on the main application. So if any delays are enforced further, I'm even more uh, a disadvantage, Your Honor. That's why I'm asking the court. Would it be a matter if the court has to read the application? Will, I, will we still proceed today or would it be a matter on a different day? That's why I'm asking. I'm proceed today, but I need an opportunity to read these papers and I have other matters waiting for you. So, I'm still those matters. I can read this at one o'clock and then I can tell you how far we are. And I can try and put you in sometime between two and three o'clock and so on. Then we can finalize this matter. I just wanted to say that if Mr. Bester is worried that his time for filing a replying affidavit in the main application has run out and postponing this matter to Thursday uh, will put him in more trouble, I can just take instructions from my client because I think in any event uh, it was going to be a sensible thing that his time for filing the replying affidavit should start running whenever the order is given. Uh, in in this ma in in this matter, I, I would presume that that would be a sensible thing. So if he was going to have uh, ten days to file it, ordinarily he he would still have 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 that ten days. I can't I can't see that there will be prejudice to no, to to my serious. client. Yes. Okay. So uh, because I'm just thinking on on the question of practicality and also accepting that you know on the part of my client the court is only getting the application uh, today. So if Mr. Bester has it, he can consider it, the court can consider it uh, uh, properly, and then in, in the next two days, literally, uh, we can all be back here and, and know that uh, all the housekeeping issues and all the matters are dealt with uh, properly. Yes. Mr. Bester, do you understand? Uh, yes, Your Honor. No, it's, it's fine, Your Honor. If, if, if we are given till 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I think by then I would also even draft my own affidavit. If, if it's today, if it's on Thursday, it's fine. I'll also uh, put my own affidavit to respond. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with two hours. Yeah. Thank you. Lady, can in the meantime just ask my attorney to properly uh, compile those affidavits? Yes. Thank you, my lady.